Hello students, welcome to another example on equivalent resistance. In this example, we want to determine the equivalent resistance in the circuit. After that, we also want to determine the, the current that is passing through each, each resistor. Now, how do we do that? Well, it's the same as uh, what we did in the previous video. So, we are being told to say R1 has a value of 700 ohms. And R2 has a value of, that's 1300 ohms. And lastly, the EMF from the source. So we're being told that this is supplying 27 volts. So if the supply is giving 27 volts, how do we get in the first part, the equivalent resistance? So for the first part, we won't need that 27 volts. So how do we get the effective resistance? So we can start from anywhere, but for now, let's start with these two. So if we try to combine these two, what do we get? Well, let's call that the first total resistance. So these two are in series. So combining them is really easy. So you can just add them 900 plus 300. Doing this gives us the sum becomes 1200 ohms. So if now we tried to just look at this part, let me just highlight it. So if we tried to just look at this part now, notice that this part, if I tried to resketch it, that part now will be this side. We have a combination of the 900 ohms and the 300 ohms. So this we labeled it as RT1, which was this ohms and then here if we look at our circuit we have 1200 ohms okay so this is now what we're seeing here so again these two can be combined so by doing that we're now combining the highlighted blue so if we try to get them these two are parallel to each other so we can use the formula for parallel so let's get that total as our total the second one this is going to be one over the first 1200 plus one over the second 1200 now i should actually even know the tricks here when the two resistors that are parallel to each other are the same then their total resistance is just going to be half whatever that common resistance is in this case the common resistance is 1200 we expect the total resistance here to just be half of 1200 which is going to be 600 let's show that so this becomes rt2 equal to single fraction here we're going to have over 1200 it's going to just be one plus two one plus one i mean which is two then simplifying this we have one over rt2 equal to one over 600 then from here this would imply that the second total resistance is now equal to just 600 ohms, as we predicted. Now, what does this give us? It gives us the total resistance of these resistors which are here. Now, let's introduce that resistor R1. So, let me redraw the whole circuit so that you guys can see how it looks, at now, how it looks like now. So, now, this is what we're seeing. So we have this resistor, R1 here. Coming down here, we have the source. Here we have the resistor R2. But this side, this is where we had all that connection. But instead, we only have the second total resistance. And this we've just seen is equal to 600 ohms. And R1 in the question, R1 is given as 700 ohms. So how do we proceed? Well, we can combine these two. These two are in series. They can be combined. Since they are in series, let's get the third total resistance. We have 700 plus 600. Adding this gives us 1300 ohms. So our circuit now, how does it look like? So our circuit, now we have the source here. This side, we have 
one resistor, this side, this side, we have another resistor. This is R2. This is the third total resistance, and we found this as 1300 ohms. But R2 is also given as 1300 ohms. And this is from the question, this is given as 26 volts. So again, we see that R2 and RT3, these two again are parallel to each other. Because they are parallel, we know they are going to be, we're going to get the final. Note that now this is the final total resistance. So this is just going to be 1 over R2 plus 1 over RT3. So again, R2 and RT3 are the same. So we can use the prediction. They have the same value, 1300 ohms. So we expect RT to just be equal to half of 1300, which is 650 ohms. So that is the prediction, of course. And then you can take the long road if you want to just be sure. Plus 1 over 1300 ohms. Single fraction. This becomes uh, the numerator. We're going to have a 2 there. And then over 1300. Um, this is to in the denominator, sorry. 1 over RT. Then when you simplify, you have 1 over RT equal to 1 over 650. Implying that. RT is equal to 650 ohms. Okay, the next part, so this answers part A. In the second part, we are being asked to get the, the current through each, each component. So let's first get the current that is coming from the source. See, if we look at our source, what is it seeing in the circuit? Well, the source, that 26 volts, what it is looking at, in the circuit is just that total resistance which is 650 ohms so because of this using ohms law from here we have the current coming from the source given as this will be given by 26 divided by 650 from here the current from the source comes out as 0 0.04 amps now, what happens? Well, let's go back one step. So, that 0 0.04 amps, that's what is coming from our source. So, let me draw this a little bit better. So, I have this. So, let's say we have just this part for now. So in this case, at this stage, the current coming from here, the current coming from here, we've just seen, this is 0 0.04, but this is 1300 ohms. But so is this. So because the resistors are the same in each line, it means that this 0 0.04 ohms is going to split up. So half of 0 0.04 ohms will go this side and half of it will go this side so in other words we can conclude that the current that comes to pass through r2 this becomes equal to just half of 0 0.04 which becomes 0 0.02 amps that will be the current coming to pass through r2 if the resistors were different, we would have used the current divider rule. But in this case, they are the same. So you're just going to half what is coming in. It's going to split half of it to go to the right, half of it to go to the left, going through R2. But how about the one going to R3, to RT3? Well, for RT3, we can even use, I think we drew it earlier on. Okay, RT3 is made up by these two. Well, it first passes through RT1. So it passes undisturbed, undivided. So here it was half of 0 
So it's still 0 0.2 amps here as well. So 0 0.2 amps, 0 0.02 amps will pass through R1. It only changes as it comes to this RT2. So here we're saying this value will be the same current that will pass through R1. So it will be 0 0.02 amps. Why am I saying it will also be that? Well, it comes from this side, 0 0.04 reaches this point, it splits up. Half goes this side towards R2, half goes this side, it passes through R1, and then it continues. So here we still have 0 0.02. But then it finds a junction here. Part of it will go down. Part of it will take this route. But how much of it will take that route? Well, in this route, down here, we have 1,200 ohms. In this route again, if you remember, we found our T1, we also had 1200 ohms. Because of that, again, this is going to split equally, such that we're going to have half of 0 0.02 going towards this 1200 ohms resistor. So going down in this route, we're going to have half of 0 0.02, which is 0 0.01. And in this route again, we're going to have 0 0.01 amps. Such that, we can conclude that the current through the 1200 ohms resistor becomes equal to 0 0.01 amps. Now, the other side, this side now, what happens? Well, the other side now, this is where we had two resistors in series. So we had the first resistor was 900 ohms. And then after that, we had the second. This resistor was given as 300 ohms. So we're saying the current coming this side is 0 0.01 amps. That is after they split up so that the other 0 0.01 went towards uh, the 1200 ohms down here. So this current comes through this line it will pass through the 900 ohms. So 0 0.01 will pass through 900 ohms. It will continue, it will pass also through the 300 ohm resistor. In other words, the current through the 900 ohms is the same as the current through the 300 ohms. And the, that current, so let me write it better, not like this. So the current through 900 ohms will be the same as the current through the 300 ohms. This is because they're in series. And that current will be the same as 0 0.01 amps. So again, the current that passes through the res resistors that are in series is going to be the same. So which is um, the trick that we used here. Okay, so this answers this example. Hope you guys found it helpful. In the next video, we're now going to introduce the, con the concept of Kikov's uh, laws. So look out for that, you guys. All right, we'll see you guys in the next video.